Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Embodied Storytelling Dance Workshop for Flux Youth Arts. My name is Tiffany, and I'm your teaching artist for this workshop. Um, a little bit about myself. My background is in theater and dance. Um, I started dancing when I was young and then kind of took a break from it and did a lot of theater, came back to dance um, in college. And um, eventually I got my bachelor's in theater and dance. And I'm now working on becoming a teacher um, to hopefully teach dance in public schools. Um, I run a company with my husband called See the Elephant, uh, where we do theater and dance of all kinds. Um, so I'm really excited to be offering this and I'll just give you an overview of what this workshop is going to be like. Um, all the workshops are about an hour or less, mine included, and I'm trying to format it so that you can kind of pick it up, pause it, restart, watch it over again, whatever way that you need to. Um, Maybe you have the opportunity to just sit down and focus on this for one or two hours, but if you don't, that's okay. Um, you can come back to this, you can rewatch parts, whatever you need to do. So it's kind of formatted that way. And basically I'm going to be giving you some building blocks for creating your own dance expressions. If you are new to dance or experienced in dance, um, then this is the workshop for you. It is designed to be accessible um, for anyone who's interested in physical movement and using that as a tool for expression or storytelling. If you've never taken a dance class before, that's okay. If you've taken lots of dance classes before, that's great too. Um, so don't be intimidated. And I'll just tell you right off the bat that in order to support you more fully in your development of your dance creations, um, I've created a Flipgrid account. I'm sure perhaps some of your teachers have used Flipgrid, um, but if not, it's basically a video sharing platform. So um, I'll show you what it looks like real quick. Share my screen. Okay, so this is my Flux Youth Arts Flipgrid. It's already created um, and I will be putting the link for it in the resources so you can um, get to it right from the Flux homepage. Um, and basically it's there and available to you if you at any point want to share your progress and um, get some feedback, uh, creating an original dance work from home can be intimidating, even for the most experienced of um, dance makers, myself included. So um, it's natural to feel a little bit like, oh, what am I doing? And that's why I created that to um, just kind of give you a place to share. This is what I'm working on. And I will be checking that and then I can send you video feedback. Um, to just help you along your way. So that's number one. Um, number two, just kind of the structure of this workshop, the next hour with me. Um, I'm going to be providing you with some examples of dances that are made from home. Most of them have been made in the last year. So dances made in 2020, um, which is kind of the area you're focusing in, right? Um, these art pieces you're developing are to express what this last year has been like, which has been wild for everyone um, and also different for everyone. And so I'm going to give you some examples. I'll just share my screen and play bit video from there. Um, and I will also have a YouTube playlist that I will link in the resources just for ongoing inspiration. There's a lot of amazing stuff out there in terms of the dance world and dance um, on film, dance from home, all of that. Um, after that, I will be um, guiding you through a physical warm-up, um, which you should be able to do at any place. 
um, just a simple way to get into our bodies and tap into, you know, since this is a physical uh, creative class, um, we'll be doing a quick physical warm up, um, followed by a little bit of guided writing to help you tap into your experiences and what you want to say, um, just to give you some jumping off points. Um, on that note, it would be helpful to have a notebook or piece of paper and something to write with nearby. So if you wanna pause me and go get that, um, that's gonna be really helpful to you to um, take notes about anything that is interesting or coming up for you and also for that writing exercise. So permission to pause and go get something to write with if need be. Another pro tip is that it's good to wear something comfortable for this workshop, um, something that is easy to move in. It's not required if you're in your regular clothes and you're happy with that, that's okay. Um, after the guided writing, um, I'm just going to present a little bit about um, building choreography from improvisation and some choreography tools. Um, and just to those of you who are new to dance making, there's two big words right there, improvisation and choreography. Um, what are those things? So improvisation is basically used in all art making um, and in life. So improvisation is not having a plan, <laughs> letting things flow and discovering as you go. So me having a conversation with somebody we're both improvising what we're going to say. We don't have a script for that conversation. So that's the most basic example of improvisation. Um, what I'm saying to you right now, I'm not using a script because I want this to be a more authentic uh, workshop delivery. So I'm improvising my words a little bit, even though I have a structure for this workshop. Um, in art making improvisation, is more, um, it's, it's about the creative process, right? So the goal is to create something, um, but the way that you're doing it isn't exactly formulated or pre-planned. Pretty much all forms of art use improvisation. And in dance making, um, that is true as well. So if your experience of dance or movement is primarily learning moves from another person, from a teacher or from a dance that um, you've taught yourself online, things like that, um, you're learning a dance, but it's a little different from improv uh, improvisation. Um, that said, don't want you to feel intimidated by what that is um, because we were all once little children and um, little children are the kings and queens of improvisation. So when they dance, um, they are creating movement from within and without a plan. Um, and so we have all done that. It's just coming back to it um, with the intention of making a dance uh, as a grown person. Um, so just a little bit more about improvisation. I want to read a section here from this book I have. And this book is called Free Play. Um, and it's all about improvisation. And so I use this a lot um, when I was teaching uh, more normally prior to COVID, I use this um, a lot. So it says, in a sense, all art is improvisation. Some improvisations are presented as is, whole and at once. Others are doctored improvisations that have been revised and re restructured over a period of time before the public gets to enjoy the work. Finished artworks that we see and may love deeply are in a sense the relics or traces of a journey that has come and gone. When we read, what we reach through improvisation is the feel of the journey itself. Um, so in essence, this is a discovery about what you wanna say about what this last year has been for you. 
And I want to encourage you to enjoy the journey as much as the end product of it. Um, and so um, improvising physical movement or dance is a really wonderful experience. Um, and the, all of your improvisations may not look like the end product um, per se, but they help you get there. <laughs> and so I really wanna encourage you to explore and play um, with movement. And then I'll just read one more section. How does one learn improvisation? So again, if this word is new to you, don't be scared. The only answer is to ask another question. What is stopping us? Spontaneous creation comes from our deepest being and is immaculately and originally ourselves. What we have to express is already with us, is us. So the work of creativity is not a matter of making the material come but of unblocking the obstacles to its natural flow. So that's just a little bit about improvisation. And I'll talk more later on about how to utilize that, how to kind of um, find that flow and move all the blocks so that you can create something that is coming from the heart, from you. Choreography. Um, if that word is new to you, choreography is essentially dance making. Um, it's the way that we construct or compose a dance. And if you've never done that before, um, that's okay. <laughs> there are tools um, like there are with any art form, just kind of essentials that you can learn and use to craft that dance in a way that you are proud of. Um, and so I'll be talking at the end of the workshop more about choreography and some really simple tools that you can use um, to make your dance. So without further ado, I'd like to start with some inspiration and showing you some examples of dance from home. As I said, these were all fairly recently recorded and um, some of them are from YouTube. That's where I'll start. Um, and between each one, I'll just kind of pause and tell you a little bit about why I'm sharing that one. Um, so this is from a dance festival and it was a virtual dance festival. And so there's a lot of different, um, dances from home. I'm just fast forwarding to the one that I want to show you. It's about six minutes in. Um, so here we go. Look and see what your next step is. Is it over there? No? No. Don't worry. Just allow air through your bones and your body will follow. Did you feel it? The effortlessness? The ease? No? What's your name again? Valerie? Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Valeria. Ah, oh, Valeria. Got it, got it, got it. Okay. Okay, so that's just a segment of this first one I wanted to show you. And what I want to point out is the use of text. Um, so what you want to start thinking about, there are a couple of things you want to start thinking about, um, which is sound and space or location. You don't need to know the answers to these yet. And in fact, I'm sure you'll discover these towards the end of your process. Um, but with sound, you have the option to use, you know, music, uh, silence or ambient sound, which are the natural sounds occurring around us all the time, dogs barking, traffic, things like that. So there's music, silence or ambient sound. And then there's the option of text. Um, which is what this last dance performer was using is pre-recorded text. Um, it's really simple to do that. You just kind of record yourself, um, usually using your phone or your computer, and then you would play it over the recording of you dancing. As you can see, 
um, that's a really effective way to kind of tell the story in an abstract way with text and movement. So that's why I wanted to show you that first one. Um, the second video I'm going to show you um, is, I'm hopping over to Instagram. So a lot of these I will not be able to provide in the YouTube playlist because they're on Instagram. Um, and there is a whole bunch of great stuff, as you know. So this first one I'm showing you, and I'll zoom in a little bit there. This is actually a friend of mine. Her name is Olivia, and she is a dance maker. And what she's done, as you can see, and this was just a casual um, Instagram post, is she's done a time lapse of herself, just finding various positions and ways to move on a couch. Um, and so this is a great idea, thinking about space. Where are you filming? Where are you dancing? Um, and I want to encourage you to know that it's okay not to um, you don't have to have a perfect location or background to record your dance. Um, we've all been at home or um, in the places that we've been living a lot this past year. And so it's an interesting choice to make movement based on where have you been? You know, the couch, the bed, um, a chair, um, things like that. So I want you to start just kind of thinking of that and seeing that it's actually a really effective choice to again, convey emotion and tell a story. Um, on that same thought, again, this improvisation was just done in somebody's living room, it looks like. Um, But you know, the dance is just so beautiful and effective. Um, and so I wanna show you these things so that you don't think, oh, I have to have all these camera angles. Um, it's nice if you can, and it's great if you have someone in your house willing to film, but it's not necessary to make an effective dance piece. You know, he just has his camera sitting in one place on the floor um, in his house. So I wanted to show you that example to show you that's okay. Similarly, this performa, performer um, is actually from India and is filming from a rooftop, probably nearby his house. Again, the camera angle is in one set place. He doesn't have anyone filming him or doing video edits here. And the sound on this. The sound is ambient, right? You hear the traffic, you hear people talking, you hear the sound of his feet brushing on the floor. And it's very effective. Um, he doesn't need movement for this piece to be um, to be really effective. Um, so that's an option for you. Let's see. Similarly, in someone's living room, right? Um, I just want to convey to you that it's okay to film from wherever you are and for it to be simple. These are all living room <laughs> videos. Okay, um, I'm gonna stop my share and I wanna show you one more example. Um, let me just pull it up here. So these two next examples that I'm going to share with you, um, uh, she's a choreographer and a dancer who I really love and I follow her. And um, this is again, an example of location and using the spaces that you're already in. Um, so hers are not in her living room. Um, 
Let me share my screen. So here's the first one. So she's got different takes. These are all really quick shots that she's edited together. As you can see, she's outside, probably just in her backyard. And she's kind of working with the natural surroundings, right? Um, her dress is also very flowy, which captures the light, the natural light and the wind. So that is an option. Um, you know, go in your backyard if that's available to you or a place outside where you've spent time this year, um, where you feel safe to move and um, that's a great option. Same dancer here. Um, sorry, it's kind of a fun, funky angle, but basically you can see she's in a stairwell and there's a big window there, right? Um, so that's just an interesting spot. Not a lot of space on the floor to move, but she's finding a lot of variety in movement. Um, and it's just a great location. So if there's a spot in your house or the place that you're staying that you're like, I just want to play around and do some dancing here on the stairs or in the door jam or whatever it is, um, I encourage you to explore that option. Um, and you could do a whole piece based on that. So those are the examples I wanted to share just to get, get your creative juices flowing and looking around your space, wherever you are and thinking about, hmm, where would I wanna dance? What furniture might I want to um, explore movement on? Um, what sounds inspire me? Um, am I thinking music? Am I thinking ambient noise? Am I thinking text? Um, some of you in this workshop are even working on crafting your own songs in the songwriting workshop. So that's an option too, if you wanted to use the song you create um, for the dance you're making. So just some things to start thinking about creatively. Now, um, we're going to transition. I will be moving spots um, and we're going to be starting a little bit of a gentle physical warm up. So now would be a good time um, to find a spot on the floor, on a bed, um, or anywhere where you would feel comfortable to do a little bit of a movement. If you need to pause um, and get yourself situated, that's absolutely fine. Go ahead and pause me and I will be in a new spot. Okay, hello. So we're going to go through a short physical warm up, And after we do that, we're going to be doing a little bit of free writing. So just a reminder um, to have something to write with nearby. And hopefully you found a comfortable space on the floor. You can also be um, on a bed or what, wherever uh, you feel like you have a little bit of space to move and also where it's comfortable for you. Um, I've rolled out my yoga mat and um, I'm in my living room. You can also be lying down on your back to start. Um, that's actually a great way to experience this warm up. I will not be doing that because I wanna make sure that my voice um, can reach the, <laughs> the computer. Um, so, um, one more thing, I will not be playing any music while I do this because it just doesn't sound as good, um, when I have that recorded on Zoom, but if you would like to have music playing softly in the background, um, feel free to do so. Um, of course, you can pause anytime, um, if you need to take a break, um, but let's begin. So you can start seated or lying down on your back and we're going to begin with breathing. Um, so taking a deep inhale and exhale. Again, inhaling and 
and exhaling. So we're inhaling through the nose and out through the mouth. And you can go ahead if it helps and place one hand here on your heart and the other hand on your lower belly, below your belly button to just feel the movement of your breath. So inhaling, you can probably feel your belly rising a little bit and your chest filling and exhaling, it's all lying flat again. So we'll just take a couple more breaths. Um, as you can see, I kind of naturally close my eyes when I start to do this. I encourage you to close your eyes if you're comfortable or just have what's called a soft gaze, which is gazing forward, but not really focusing on anything, um, just as a way to kind of relax your senses and start settling down into your body. So we'll take a couple more breaths. Great. And whether you're seated or lying down, you can kind of let your hands fall. They can be by your sides or on your knees, depending on how you're positioned. And we're going to continue those breaths. So deep inhaling and exhaling. And I want you to find your own rhythm of inhaling and exhaling. And we're gonna, I'm gonna kind of guide you by counting for your inhale and your exhale. So we're inhaling one, two, three, four, five, and exhaling one, two, three, four, five, six. Inhaling one, two, three, four, five, and exhaling one, two, three, four, five, six. And the reason we're intentionally drawing out our exhales is to help us physically settle in, kind of helps those nerves settle down. And you wanna just relax into your body. Inhaling and drawing that exhale out. And as you continue those long, deep breaths, just start to take notice of what your body feels like right now. Again, it helps to have your eyes closed if that's comfortable for you. So you can start kind of sensing inward. So things you might notice are excitement or um, apprehension, nervousness. You might take notice of any areas in your body where you're holding tension so that feel kind of tight. And just to be clear, there's nothing really that I'm doing. So you don't have to even be watching. You can totally close your eyes and just listen um, through this. So as you're just scanning your body, taking note of what's going on, Noticing any feelings, areas of tension, possibly areas of discomfort, just taking note of where you might be feeling tight or uncomfortable. You don't have to change anything. Just take note and continue breathing, breathing deeply into your full body.
Noticing now temperature. Are you warm? Are you cold? How are you feeling the air around you? Feeling the air as you inhale and as you exhale. Beginning to really let go into the breath into the body, quieting thoughts, just allowing thoughts to roll in and roll away, taking the moment to just be where you are and be present. Now beginning very slowly um, to find a little bit of movement. And this is the part of the warm up where I encourage you to listen deeply to your body as you've been paying attention to areas of tension, um, feelings, and you're just going to start following your body's intuition, meaning you're going to start moving the way that your body wants to move. Um, and that might be a difficult thing at first to really turn off the brain and say, okay, where does my body want to move right now? And if you opened your eyes to see the camera, I'm doing something. I'm listening to my body to see how it wants to move, but that's not what you need to look like or what you need to be doing. So again, you can go ahead and have your eyes closed or have that soft gaze. Continue those breaths and just start moving how your body is wanting to move. You can keep the movement small at first. And then if you're feeling that your body wants to move a little bit bigger, you can go ahead and just follow that. If someone were to watch, it might look like a stretch. It might look like something else. So it's not really about what it looks like, but more of following and tuning into your body. So continue to just find that movement following your body's impulse and following what feels good. So whatever you're doing right now should feel good. Um, whether it's a stretch, whether it's just a kind of movement, whether it's a shake, <laughs> whatever it is, it should feel good. So you don't wanna force anything. but rather follow what your body is saying it really needs in this moment. Continuing to breathe, continuing to explore and follow. And on your next breath out, we're just going to come back to seated. So if you were lying down before, we'll come back to seated now. And we're just going to do some gentle stretching, um, continuing to breathe. 
And you can have your eyes closed, soft gaze, or looking at the screen. And we're going to inhale forward and exhale, curving the spine, letting the head roll forward and falling backwards. So again, inhaling, coming forward, exhaling, rolling the spine, letting the head go. You should feel a nice release in your neck when you do that. Inhaling forward, exhaling, rounding the back, tucking the chin. And one more time, inhaling forward, exhaling, rolling back, tucking the chin. And back to center. On this next inhale, we're going to sweep your right arm upwards and fold over to the other side. So we're getting a nice side stretch here, opening up the rib cage, the arms and the hips, exhaling, inhaling back to center, and exhaling, folding to the other side. We'll do that one more time. So inhaling back to center, exhaling, reaching over, folding to one side, feeling the stretch in your side body and back to center. Inhaling and exhaling, reaching over, feeling that stretch and back to center. Now we're gonna raise our arms both up Taking a big inhale and exhaling, hands coming down. Now we're going to come onto our feet. So if you're on your bed, um, you can go ahead and do a forward. So stretching your legs in front of you and you're just going to fold your body forward. If you're on the floor like me, you'll plant your feet on the floor pressing down and folding the body forward so that you're hanging forward. Um, so just getting a nice upside down stretch. Great, feeling a nice stretch in your legs. And we're just gonna bend the knees slightly and roll up the spine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight nine, 10. Now I'm all the way up to standing and I'm gonna reach my arms overhead with an inhale and exhale coming back down. So I'm just rolling my spine back down all the way to the ground till my hands can press gently. You can absolutely bend your knees um, or you can take that full stretch with your legs long. Releasing the head. And when you're down here, I want you to shake your head, yes or no. And so you're just really releasing your neck. So folding forward, hands pressing into the floor, shaking your head and bending the knees, inhaling, rolling up on a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, bringing the arms up, inhaling, and 10, coming to center and releasing. Now that you're up, and this is gonna feel silly, um, if you are laying down, you wanna get on your feet now. If you are sitting, you're here with me, and we're just gonna shake. So you're gonna shake however you want to. You're gonna look silly, I know I do, but you're just shaking your whole body. And you're shaking out that tension and those nerves and just getting all loosened up. I also like to do like a bounce and you just kind of let everything flop. And take a big inhale as you're doing this and exhaling. Great. So from wherever you are now, we've got our bodies all warmed up. Just coming back to a comfortable place to sit. If you have um, something to write with, you wanna bring it next to you, okay? So finding a comfortable place to sit, if you need to pause and get your writing pad, you may. 
And then we'll all come back to sitting. And we're gonna take three more breaths now that we've done that warm up. So seated, breathing in and out. Inhaling and exhaling. And keep breathing, taking note of what feels different. So from when we started the warm up with the breathing to now, you might just notice changes in how your body is feeling and sensing. So just taking mental note. And we're gonna gently open our eyes if they aren't already and transition. So you can stay where you are if you're comfortable there. And we're just gonna pick up whatever you have to write with. And we're gonna do what's called a free write. So a free write is an unstructured um, writing prompt where I'll give a phrase or the start to a sentence and you will write whatever comes into your head for about two or three minutes. Um, my, my helpful hints for doing free writes if this is the first time you've done one is don't censor. Um, and oftentimes we can start to pause. So writing something and then stopping and thinking about what we wanna write about. Rather than doing that, try to write fluidly. So with no stopping. And if it feels like what you're saying is nonsensical, that's okay. If you feel like you're not sure what to write next, then just write what comes next. Um, so the goal is really to um, write freely, hence the name free write. Um, and just know that no one's going to look at this. It's just for you. Um, so the first prompt I'm going to give you, if you're ready, is my body is saying. So my body is saying that, that, that. And you begin to write. And I'm actually just going to be quiet for like two minutes to let you write that. You could also pause me. So my body is saying. You can pause if you want a little more time to write. Um, the next prompt is going to be, my body wants to. So my body wants to dot, 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 and then begin writing whatever comes to mind. And go ahead and take two or three minutes to free write. My body wants to. Once again, you can pause if you want more time to write. Um, the last prompt I'm going to give for the free write is my body contains. So if our bodies are a container for this last year, um, a jar to be filled with something, then my body contains dot, 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 and writing whatever comes to mind. So take a moment right on that prompt and then we will i will start the next section okay here i am back over here so you've written um some text and that can serve many purposes for your dance making number one it can just be great to reflect on um you know what is going on inside of you and to just start opening up those experiences and those stories for yourself. Um, 
your writing can be a place to come back to as you go on your journey of, of creating. Um, sometimes it's really great if you just have a, a flash of a thought, you know, some words or images that come and just write those down. And you may not know exactly how they fit into your piece yet, but they're really helpful to guide you in your creation. Um, the other thing that you may do with your writing is actually use it for either your choreography or um, if you're interested in doing text instead of music, um, using that to as text to record. Um, so those are some of the things that you can do with the free rights you just did. Um, So now I'm just going to give you some tools and tips for improvisation and choreography. Um, so after doing that warm up or any kind of physical warm up, um, and again, you can um, do your own style of warm up. You can just watch that video if you need to get into it. Um, but from there, from that place, right before we did the writing, you could really start improvising movement right there. Um, and what I typically do is actually just um, find a spot to put my phone or my computer where I wanna record and I'll just start moving. And sometimes I'll have music on and sometimes I won't, but I'll start with a simple warm up like that just to get kind of out of my head and into my body. And then um, I'll just start moving. And the beautiful thing about being able to record yourself is that you don't need it to look perfect or be structured. You can be as loose as, as you wanna be. And then later when you go back and watch yourself dancing, you'll say, ooh, I liked that. Or no, that wasn't quite, what, quite right. Um, and you can actually start building choreography that way. So um, what I would suggest is just taking some time, um, whatever you can, to set up however you want to record, do a little bit of movement, um, try out some, some movement that's been in your brain or, you know, or just improvise without a plan, record yourself. And then just keep collecting those recordings. And when you look at them, you can start to see, oh, I liked that movement that I did. Maybe I'll try to repeat that one. And you can structure a dance that way. Um, so that's one very simple way to build your dance uh, where you also get to do a lot of improvisation and just have fun doing it. Um, another way to build your dance is um, like the example I showed you earlier with my friend who was on the couch um, and finding different ways to move in relationship to that piece of furniture. So if there is a spot in your house um, that you're interested in experimenting with, maybe a spot where you've spent a lot of time this last year, um, it could be something as simple as you know, again, a couch, a bed, a chair, a desk, places where we've all spent a lot of time this last year. And so finding where um, you can move in relationship to that thing. Um, and that's a really fun way to create a dance because it's not, you, it can feel a little bit like it's not up to you to come up with um, original movement. And instead you can work with an object that's actually there. The third way I'm going to um, recommend building movement is with um, a tool in choreography called accumulation. Accumulation is a choreography tool that is basically a pattern. So it goes A, A, B, A, B, C, A, B, C, D. And so each letter would represent a movement. So for example, um, if I go A and then I repeat, but add something new. So A, B, A, B, C, A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D, 
E. Simple. Um, I love using accumulation um, because it can be really powerful um, when you put it all together. And it's easy. You come up with one gesture at a time. Um, the other reason I think accumulation would be great for this particular project is because you can look at your text um, or if you have really strong experiences or emotions about this last year, writing those down and coming up with a gesture for each of those words or those moods. Um, again, so for example, um, you can just pair your, well, I have an example. So I'm going to show you an example. This is not accumulation, what I just referred to, but it is a great example of how a choreographer has paired text with movement in a really clear way. Um, the choreographer is um, actually did the music video for one of Sia's music videos. I think it was in the last five years. Um, and he's a little bit quirky, um, but I really enjoy his performance. Um, so we'll just watch, not the whole thing, but a little bit of it. So you'll see, he's actually going to speak um, the words and show the movement that goes with it. So you can see how the movement is just based on the text. So here we go. Morse code, Morse code, you're getting higher. Hunger pains. Eyes with mouths. Wounded dog in one of those wheelchairs. A familiar tear, repetitive tear. Ice skater. Don't attempt this at home. Gluttonous and lonely. Wax on, wax off. Blow. Powder. Fork, fork. Stab it in the wall. Throw it out. Pass out. Come to. Look. Charlie Chaplin, Charlie Chaplin. Cockroach. Up the wall. Clean your mustache. Pass. <laughs> And you've eaten too much again. Cat. <laughs> okay, that's all I'm going to show you from that one. That will be available in the uh, resources playlist. Um, but as you can see, he's created movement um, from these strange phrases. And you wouldn't know it just from watching the dance without the text. But you can see how it's so easy to build movement that way. So just to review, there are a, a few ways that um, just launching points that I'm giving you to start exploring building your dances. Um, the first is just improvising with the camera on you, totally free, um, and then going back and reviewing those videos and saying, oh, I like this, I like that, and kind of building your choreography that way. That's the first way. The second option is to um, basically play with or explore a piece of furniture or a location in your house that you're interested in, um, in exploring. Um, the example I gave was uh, the couch dance. Um, so you could do something like that. You could find another interesting spot. You could work with a chair. You could work with whatever. Um, so exploring um, dance making that way in partnership with um, a physical object. The third way is, um, you know, using your text or um, if there's a poem or, you know, lyrics from a song that you love, you can use that text as well to springboard movement. So looking at a piece of text, whether it's something you've written or something someone else has written, and looking at a single word or a phrase and coming up with a movement that kind of fits that for you. Um, and then you can just link all of those movements together to create a dance piece. And then the fourth way is just this choreographic tool called accumulation. Um, again, you can use text to kind of help you come up with the simple movements or gestures but it's, um, it's a pattern, a way to create dance just based on this very simple pattern, A, A, B, A, B, C, A, B, C, D. And so you start with one 
and then you just add on each time. Um, and I will try to provide you with an example of that in the resources. So once again, um, I encourage you to just dive right in um, and start exploring dance making in whatever way you feel is best. Um, the resource that I can provide is the Flipgrid. And so that link will be available on your resources. And you can feel free to share dance or movement at, um, at any point in your process. If you also have a very simple question, um, you can also just record that question for me and I'll try to get you some feedback. I'm very excited to see what you all will create. Um, this last year has been like none other and I personally can't imagine, um, you know, my teenage years going through all the things that you have been through. I know there's a lot of just story in that and experience in that. And so um, I'm just excited to see what you create. I'm confident that you will be able to create something powerful and meaningful and beautiful. Um, and if you need any more help along the way, I'll be available for you. Thank you for watching this workshop. It will be available, um, so you can always come back to it if you forgot something or you want to do the warm up again, see some of the examples, anything. Um, and I look forward to seeing your works of art, your embod embodied storytelling very soon. Bye.